What's going on ladies and gentlemen, this is going to bring you people the beginning of the oh so generically named Pokemon Reviews. Basically, the series is mainly intended to give you guys a nicely polished and hopefully insightful review of the many fan games slash ROM hacks related to Pokemon from the most popular to the least popular. Personally speaking, I've been playing ROM hacks and fan games for uh, of Pokemon obviously <laughs> for five straight years and um, Throughout this entire time frame, I really have never seen a specific series on YouTube that aims to, you know, provide these said reviews in any manner, minus those top fives and top tens, and um, in my humble opinion at least, they are very vague to the point where they really don't describe the game as well as it's supposed to, yeah. So... Basically, I'm attempting to I'm attempting to fix that by starting the series on my own, and um, hopefully, I can make some I can make something out of this and make this something which each and every single one of you can come to enjoy. So um, yeah, hopefully this uh, hopefully this series will introduce you to a great number of fan fan games slash ROM hacks. So with that being said, I feel the need to I think I should uh, I think I should need to stress the fact that. All these reviews that I'm going to uh, state for these Pokemon fan games and ROM hacks. Oh my god, how many times am I saying that already? Sorry about that. Is mainly my opinion and my opinion only. So if any of you guys have played these uh, played these set games and and um, don't really see eye to eye with some of my opinions when it comes down to them, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below and state exactly why. Uh, state exactly why that is if you feel like it because I completely encourage it. Yes, that's the way, that's how you're supposed to articulate it. Oh my gosh. But yeah, with that being said, we're going to start, we're going to start this series by looking at one of the most, um, one of the, one of the rather very well-renowned Pokemon, uh, Pokemon uh, ROM hacks, which is none other than Pokemon Prism. So with that being said, enough of me rambling on, let's get right into this, shall we? Pokemon Prism is a ROM hack of Pokemon Crystal that has been in development for 7 straight years by an individual known as Cool Boy Man. It is a sequel to Pokemon Brown which is a ROM hack of Pokemon Red. Unfortunately, it received the cease and desist order from Nintendo nearly 2 weeks before the release date after the official trailer was unfortunately aired on Twitch Plays Pokemon. However, other anonymous parties that claimed that they weren't affiliated with the creator chose to leak the ROM, the ROM into 4chan so that we could experience all the work put into this hack. Speaking of them, they are currently working on updating the game to fix all the bugs, glitches, as well as doing their best to update it, so I will leave, leave their links in the description down below. Feel free to check them out. So that's pretty much it for the history of this ROM hack. Now with the boring background out of the way, let's start with the review. Pokemon Prism, just like its predecessor, breaks the glass ceiling in regards to the usual amount of Pokemon that could be attained. There are a total of 252 Pokemon that can be attained, mostly from Gen 1 to Gen 4, with only one Pokemon that can be found in the 6th Gen. Furthermore, it also has custom music, along with some remade music from other fat Pokemon games, which I believe is always a great bonus or a trait for any ROM hack or fan game. Add that with the fact that the added Pokemon even have their own animations. It really does show exactly how much put work was put into it. There are a total of 6 new types that have been added into this game, from Wind, Sound, Gas, Wood, and Abnormal, along with the Fairy type with only 3 types among the list that can be attained in the given version, leading up to the Seize and Desist order. And on a minor note, the physical slash special split, yes, <laughs> along with abilities itself have been added as well, which further solidifies the point I'm trying to make. As far as the gameplay goes, this hack is hands down one of the best in every possible way. I mean, you literally can customize your trainer in a freaking crystal ROM. From appearance to skin color, you name it. Add that with having an overworld sprite for every single Pokemon available, the added moves having their own special animations, along with being able to even play as your own Pokemon when entering certain areas, you can't help but get excited. There are two entire regions to explore from, Naito, from Naijo to Region, along with certain parts of both Kanto and Johto, as well as other, another region in Tunod, 
which if added with the tons of mini games that have been added to the game as well, show just how much time you can spend on this hack without getting tired. The game can be fully enjoyable if you're the kind of person that likes to explore every single bit of the game with hopes of getting rewarded by finding something new, which the game does in every possible way. There are tons of easter eggs and references that do play a part one way or another, which further adds to the experience. Not only that, there are some cleverly done puzzles, some of which will have to will make you rack your brain around quite well before going through with it, which in a sense also adds more dimension to the game itself, rather than being just a normal, regular, straightforward experience. When it comes down to the story, I'd like to start by saying that the game has a very great and well-written history or background, with a lot of depth into it which, in my opinion at least, quite frankly, sells itself very well as a legitimate Pokemon region. So, in that regard, the creator definitely does, ha does have my uh, approval. It starts off in an interesting manner where your mother sheds some light on your father and how you should not be upset due to him not being around. Unfortunately, as you le leave for a bit to take a walk, a landslide is what separates you from her. You find a card which the bystander claims should lead you right back to her, but instead it slips and takes you to a completely different place known as the Niger region. From there, the story begins. The, the antagonists are Power Rangers in the Pokemon universe known as Pilot Patrollers. Each member has their own unique personality, which quite frankly makes them a joy to encounter and beat up. This section of the video contains spoilers. So if you're a person that does not want the story to be revealed and want to experience it for yourself, feel free to skip ahead in the timestamp mentioned right here. The Nigel region has four guardians which are quite well designed fakemons, and just like the region itself have solid stories behind them which immediately grabs your attention and makes you look forward to seeing them. The scenario with the region is that it once used to be isolated from the other regions around the Pokemon world because, of, because the guardians and the people deemed the outside world corruptive and didn't want it to spread to their pure region. Now with the four guardians being put to, long, to a long sleep, times have changed as people from around the world have started reaching the Niger region and the people of the current generation are accepting them with open arms. The leader of the Pallet Patroller aims to reawaken the Guardians so that they can kill off every single outsider from the Niger region so that it can be, in their words, pure and free from corruption once again. Obviously for the st sake of strengthening the plot, they end up succeeding in awakening, in awakening one of them. Now obviously with such a well-written way to start things off, you'd think that things can only get better from here on onwards, right? Right? Wrong. Unfortunately, due to the cease and desist order, there was a lot of content that would add to the story that never really made the cut as the leaked versions were, was rather outdated. The original plan after beating the game is all written here, which I will link in the description down below, but because of everything that's written here being failed to be implemented in the game, what happens is that nothing really results from all the buildup, and unfortunately you end up being relegated to finding all three of the guardians in their resting places, and Varenius being in the grass as it's roaming all around Nigel. So as a result, that kinda takes a lot away from what otherwise would have been the ultimate hack and ends up being the one and only huge flaw in this masterpiece. And the worst part is, it's not even the creator's fault. I was initially left devastated and upset when I saw nothing really come of what was foreshadowed initially and wondered why the developers would go through all such lengths to show all of this. But after seeing this, I can't help but wonder what would have happened if everything had come to fruition. However, the only sort of criticism I have regarding the story, even if all these plans were implemented, would have to be the fact that the way you reunite with your mother was just way too anticlimactic for me. Like all you had to do was beat your dad for the title and he would just casually take you over to where your mother is in the exact same place. If that was possible, why couldn't you, why couldn't the player just easily fly all the way to her after getting the fly HM? Then again, we're talking about a game where a duck trio can use a supersonic sky strike. So I think it's best if we don't really apply logic here. Despite Pokemon Prism having a rather disappointing and lackluster story, the tons of revolutionary features and gameplay which other hackers haven't even been able to implement in their own hacked games atone for it in every possible way. I'm a person that gives huge priority to the story itself, but it's the gameplay as well as the endless features and easter eggs that pay homage to the many rumors circulating the first Pokemon games 
made me look past that one big flaw and enjoy the entire experience. While in my eyes it is not my favorite or the best ROM hack that I've played, it certainly does live up, live up to the hype as a top tier fan game, which is why it gets a solid 8.5 out of 10. So yeah, that's basically all there is to it for the first episode of the oh so generically named Pokemon Reviews. I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed this video. As far as the next episode goes, say no more, for it shall be done by next week, hopefully. <laughs> so until then, thank you so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this video in any way, as well as the new di direction I'm taking with my channel, feel free to like that, uh, feel free to like this video and let me know in the comment section down below what you think of it. Feel free to follow me on Twitter as well, all of it will be linked in the description down below. And with that being said, this is your friendly neighborhood Starman signing out. Stay awesome, love you guys, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>